Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Overwatch All-Star Trials. Hi, I am your caster, CJ, and today I am joined by... Uh, I am Val Mello. Uh, pleasure to work with you, man. Likewise, and today we're going to be getting into the matchup between Winter Solstice and Love Shack here in week three. Winter Solstice right now is riding one and one with a victory in their second match and loss in their first. Meanwhile, Love Shack Esports is currently one win and one draw. So it'll be interesting to see how these two teams stack up to each other going into this. Yeah, I'm excited to see how that how it works out for them. I am as well. Uh, so our first map is going to be, uh, I believe, Oasis, which, you know, starting off on control gives us a little bit of flexibility with compositions. You know, when it's when you're going into these uh, control maps, there's a lot of brawling going on. There's a little room to just have fun with it. Uh, on certain points of Oasis, you can see the Farah come out. you have anything you'd be uh, excited to see going into this matchup? Uh, I'm really excited because uh, with the patch changes that came in on Tuesday or today, Tuesday, Tuesday, yeah, uh, we got some changes. Maybe some Winston. He's got he's got a couple buffs. We might be seeing some semi dive coming around. It's very possible, especially now that Sigma's gotten a little bit of a nerf. Uh, previously, you could sort of infinitely redeploy that shield, and right now there is a one second cooldown after you recall it before you can send it back out. It means you've got to be very smart with that positioning and uh, play around it a little more carefully than you did in the past. Uh, makes it also quite a bit harder to stop Sombra from hacking you, so it's possible we'll see some of that going on. Yeah, it gives a lot more free reign for the DPS. You you may not be dealing with that double shield now. Mm -hmm. You know, you got some more movement. You got some you got some flankers that you might you haven't seen for a while. Uh huh. And uh, you know, I, I figure we'll stick at least somewhat close to the meta just because it's what a lot of teams have been practicing. But right now, until it's sort of solidified, we're in that period where people are going to be experimenting. They're going to be trying new things. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see some inventive compositions going on here once we load into Oasis. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things about actually during the OWL offseason, these teams are kind of free to experiment. They're not following the pro meta, so they can kind of do whatever they would like. Yeah, and right now we're in between contenders. The Overwatch World Cup uh, hasn't kicked off yet, so whatever they've come up with is still kind of, uh, you know, within their uh, within their circle at least, a secret. Uh, so, you know, who knows what we're going to end up seeing uh, in a, you know, down the line is the meta game, but right now there's some freedom to it, especially, uh, you know, obviously everyone in any tournament wants to win, you know, push forward, get that W, make a name for yourselves, prove your ability. Uh, and, but don't forget, you know, this is a relatively low stakes environment. You're not going to be losing out on hundreds of thousands of dollars in yeah. prize money if you end up uh, losing the uh, losing your game. So, I mean, why not have a little fun with it? Yeah, I just want to see some tour. That's all. <laughs> hey, it's, it's all anybody wants. It's a possibility, man. It's a possibility. But... And uh, we're getting, we're going to be getting ready to load in momentarily. But one thing I want to remind everyone is our MVP poll will be live throughout the match uh, in our Twitch panel. So, if you see someone whose performance is really impressing you, go in, uh, cast your vote as to who our MVP is. Uh, all right, looks like we are, both teams are readied up. We're loading into Oasis. And the first point we're seeing is City Center. All right, yeah, this is, you know, back in the day, you would see some Winston on this map. You know, you take the high ground with them. You can also see some Ryan just staying on that low ground, trying to bully people out. Far as a possibility, too. There's a little bit of open oh, yeah. space around the central point that you can rein in some rockets. Uh, that, that high ground control could be very important, so we'll see how they uh, play around it once the doors finally unlock. Yeah. I'm just I'm just excited. I've, like you said, we're in that downtime between uh, Contenders, Owl, and the World Cup, so we can, we can see some fun stuff tonight. I'm, I'm very, very excited. Absolutely. Yep, two fairs, like you said. All right. This is going to be interesting. Now, when it comes to the hit scan, who do you think has the advantage between the Ash or the McCree? we got a little bit of a change between the two teams so yeah, far. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. McCree, uh, 
I feel like the McCree might have a slight edge, especially because with Deadeye, you do have that zoning ability. Mm. But let's see what's going to happen here. We've got the... Uh, we have the Farah and Ash coming out for Love Shack Gaming, and we've got the McCree coming out for Winter Solstice. Otherwise, these compositions, fairly similar, with the other big difference being the Ana versus the Batiste. Pushing in Aspect, trying to pressure out Ash's Bay, not really getting too much damage done, but we have Love Shack pushing aggressively onto the point, trying to sort of uh, pressure out the front line from Winter Solstice. Big picks coming out from Convictions and Aspect, and it looks like Love Shack is starting to come apart here. We do have an answering pick onto Love to Kill You too, but th at this point, the uh, the fight's kind of over here. It's a little uh, little more on the academic side, but Silver Star answering pick onto Devtron, and as I say that, they bring the fight back, and it looks like the first cap is going to be going over to Winter Solstice. Yeah, that McCree's doing doing work. He's uh, keeping the fair in check, and you know able to bring down their shields a little bit better, I think, than the Ash did. Big ups to Silver Star as well. Did a lot of work in that fight. Landed a big sleep, big anti-nades. And it looks like uh, Love Shack is swapping over to a tried and true classic with a little variation, Genji Tracer Dive. Let's yeah, see if they can make anything lucky. happen with it. Xerxes, your god, coming in, pressuring out that front line. Gets pulled in, but does manage to escape before any telling damage is done. Love Shack looking for an angle, but Weapon Tech X goes in deep and he pays for it with his life. With picks off Aspect, so far the fight is one and one. Rez coming through from Theory Tropic, though Aspect is back in the fight. Let's see if he can stay up, and he makes the most of that second chance at life, taking out Ashes Bay. Julio Devtron, this man is going insane. And that's the big difference that Mercy can make. If, you know, you exchange those picks, you trade those picks at the start. Mercy raises that back up. Now you're back into a 6v5. Yes, and having the ultimate advantage riding, you know, maintaining that composition through the through the first fight into the second, we're going to have a lot of ultimates coming online for Winter Solstice. Yeah, it's tough. Once you get that momentum going with this comp, you can just chain the ultimates. Kind of goat style. However, it looks like uh, Love Shack Gaming strikes first. Kills on to love to kill you too, Jay the Great and Convictions. Uh, it looks like this fight is starting to break down on point. No clear winner yet. Aspect, Aspect though, doing his level best to bring his team back into the fight. But a big anti-nade on the support line for Winter Solstice results in the loss of Silver Star. Aspect is alone on point with that pocket from Theory Tropic. Can he stay alive for reinforcements to come through? Not quite. He falls and while Love to Kill You 2 does make it to point, Ashes Bay has the Dragon Blade. Doesn't really get anything from it though. But it looks like his team might be able to win this fight out nonetheless. Jay the Great is alone on point. He falls, and right now it looks like that first point is going to go back over to Love Shack Gaming. Yeah, they were able to, that yeah, crew was able to stall it all the way out to 99. And, you know, they burned some ultimates out of, uh, out of the other side. Yeah, and while Winter Solstice does currently have a bit of an ult disadvantage, they only win one. F they only need to win one fight, and it looks like they're off to a good start. Xerxes, your god, is down and out. Convictions is trying to pressure that high ground, but gets a little too close for comfort and pays for it. Wisp popping off right now, taking out two members of the team, joined by Weapon Tech X, and yeah, this fight's over. Winter Solstice back to spawn, back to the drawing board. Yeah, they, they've got, got a tough defense line here. You wouldn't think the dive, you know, you could push into it, but they, they surround you and they flank you, and it's, it's, it's a trap. Absolutely, and that trap snaps shut quickly. That fight's done, you know, before 50% is even ticked up. But right now, we have a big ultimate advantage for Love Shack Gaming, but that is only momentary. Big oh, bomb from Wisp wow. Convictions, forcing Theory Tropic to burn that res early into the fight. Love Shack pushing in aggressively, trying to make the most of this momentary confusion, and it looks like they're going to manage it. Another fight, handily won by Love Shack Gaming. They're looking to bring this all the way back from 99 to 0 to 100. Yeah, usually the McCree would have a big advantage against this kind of dive comp, but they're finding ways around that flashbang. They're, they're getting to the back line, and that stick was just incredible by Wisp.
A lot of work coming out from Wisp. Aspect does get two parting kills onto Love Shack, but nothing telling. They're ready to go into this fight. The dive comes through. Will it be effective? Silver Star in a lot of pressure gets off that nano before dying. Weapon Tech X popping his ultimate. Ultimate's coming out on both sides. Jade the Great falls, and it looks like now Love Shack is just going to be running away with this. Their ultimate's layered more uh, intelligently, a little more carefully, and it looks like, oh, at the end of the day, the disadvantage was just too great for Winter Solstice to overcome. Convictions and Theory Tropic trying to clutch it out, but they're not going to manage it. Kill onto Julio. More stall coming out from Silver Star, but I don't know how long he's going to survive. I mean, you said Love Shack more layering the ults, whereas, you know, Winter Solstice kind of stacking everything, going in hard at once, and just didn't get the kills. Aspect with the kill on Twist, love to kill you too. He's back in there. So far, uh, Winter Solstice might not be out of this completely, though the odds are dire. Love to kill you too, getting very low, falls to the mine from Xerxes, your god. We have a nanoed Farah on the field. Will Convictions be able to get anything done? Scores a kill onto Julio and Devtron. Can they bring it back here? Can the clutch happen? Looks like, looks like maybe. Who's going to fall next? Weapon Tech X is getting low. Convictions drops him too. This man is single-handedly pulling his team back into the fight. Jay the Great doing his part for his team. Aspect popping off. And it looks like Winter Solstice is going to be able to grind that out through an absolutely masterful series of stalls to stagger out the uh, kills, give their team the opportunity to come back in. Devtron falls, Julio falls, and the point is flipping back over Winter Solstice. That overtime burns out instantly. Absolutely incredible. Big stalls were able to get the pharmacy back onto uh, the point with convictions there, and just Genji Tracer didn't have an answer for, for that sky attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that duo of uh, convictions and Theory Tropic, pretty powerful for their team. Let's see if they keep that rolling, see if they actually do keep that going into the next matchup. Theory Tropic doing a great job keeping herself alive and her Farah as well. Yeah, great, great job. Like I said, keeping everybody alive, keeping everybody topped up, bouncing around in between everybody, but making sure that Farrah got that damage boost to, to to clear off that point. Absolutely, and Convictions did a lot of work with it. All right, we're going to be getting the Orisa Hog coming out from Love Shack. This is going to be an interesting one to see. They're going to need to try and make the most of that Halt Hook combo if they want to get the very mobile DPS of Winter Solstice out of the way. And they're going to do it instantly. Big opening headshot from Wisp onto Aspect. Looking to even things up right here. Pushing in deep. Ashes Bay is taken down. Will fall. Aspect has been rezzed by Theory Tropic. This fight, uh, so far, no telling advantage yet, but we do have a one-player advantage for Winter Solstice. We've got a lot of damage coming in from Convictions on the side, Aspect in that back line, and it looks like the DPS are just going to be able to take advantage of the opening, find the angles to get the kills. It's not over yet, though. Xerxes, your god, on point, goes down into the hole to try and escape death. Love to kill you too, managing to stay alive. Convictions is just raining down hell from above though. Yeah, they just do not have an answer for this fair. I think they went with the hog trying to maybe hook it out because the skybox isn't as big on this map, but oh just as I said there's oh, the hook. Xerxes your god lands the hook. Doesn't get the immediate kill, but does get the follow-up. Looks like he's gonna pay for it though. Will his team be able to come in and take advantage of the momentary uh loss of convictions? No. Theory Tropic again with the res. Uh Love Shack forced to wait for Xerxes to respawn Point control still in favor of Winter Solstice. Yeah, Theory Tropic just on point with these reses, making sure that her team always has the advantage, always has the numbers in the fight. going in, getting a double kill, may lose his life in the process, but it gives his team a massive advantage and another fight won pretty much without effort on the part of, uh, of Winter Solstice. I don't even think they needed the uh, supercharger from Orisa. Not really, no, you had the damage, you had the healing and on the fire keeping well. her alive. Theory Tropic as well popped her ultimate. That might yes. end up costing Winter Solstice in the next fight. Yeah, they might come to regret that, but they got Convictions back in now. 
And once again, laying down some early damage. Big pull coming out from Love to Kill You 2. But it's Jay the Great suffering the first death. Julio popping his ultimate, and we've got ultimates coming Whoa! out and left and right from Love Shack. But Aspect doing everything possible to try and bring this back. Oh. It's not quite enough, but a triple kill pulse bomb. You haven't seen one of those in a while. <laughs> no, you do not. You don't see that every day, but that bomb in the back line just tore through the opposing team. Expert positioning from Wisp. And now Love Shack with the control of the point. You don't have to worry about seeing that Bob on the flank, but he'll do some damage if left uncontested. Yep. Absolutely. Love to kill you too, trying to push onto point, but that shield is done. Cooldown's forced. Silver Star, hooked by Xerxes, your god, taken out of the fight. Uh, if you're Winter Solstice, you got to consider kind of stepping back here because right now you're down one of your primary sources of healing. You're losing people, and while you may get that kill onto Ashes Bay, right now Love Shack has more sustain on the point. You're going to need to make these kills happen. And with Jay the Great falling, I think they got to back out. They need to retreat. Yeah, this Roadhog is doing work. He's burning down the shields. He's keeping convictions in check. Gin got the other hook. Absolutely. And still managing to get out. The support line from Winter Solstice momentarily exposed. Managed to escape with their lives, but no such luck for Aspect. Another pull coming out. Uh, no kill, no kills yet. Team's kind of jockeying in the neutral, trying to get an advantageous position. Xerxes, your god, swinging around to the back. Puts a lot of damage onto Jade the Great, but does not secure the kill just yet. Xerxes is slept from Silver Star. Ult's coming out on the side of Winter Solstice, and we have another Bob from Wisp. Will this one be a successful? Wait, let's find out. Convictions takes out Xerxes, your god, before falling to ashes, your bay. But it looks like Winter Solstice might be grinding this one out. The Rezon Convictions bringing him back into the fight. Weapon Tech X falling along with Ashes Bay and Wisp. Aspect doing everything possible to bring his team back into the fight. Convictions giving him the support needed to secure these kills. We have a late kill onto Devtron. That is going to be, uh, that's going to cost Love Shack some time getting back into the fight. Yeah, Winter Solstice is doing an excellent job kind of swapping in and out, having the fair up top, Tracer running in from the side. When they focus one, the other one goes in and just, you know, Love Shack having to constantly swap between high and low ground. Aspect takes out Ashes Bay, no fear of the counter pick here. Pushing in deep, has got that bomb. Are we gonna see another triple kill? Not quite, Take, taken down by Xerxes, your god, but uh, Aspect's team has done all the work around him in this case. Xerxes, your god's the only one left, aside from Devtron, Wisp gets back to point. Ultimate coming out from Jay the Great to try and secure these kills. And yeah, that's going to be it. It looks like this first map is going to be going over to Winter Solstice as soon as they secure these last couple kills. Julio Aspect down. doing a good job cleaning up like the Tracer's supposed to. Absolutely doing a good job taking advantage of the chaos that his teammates create, slipping in and out, getting kills. A DPS clinic coming out from Winter Solstice, and that's going to net them the first map, Oasis. Yeah, that was absolutely a blast to watch. Swapping the DPS up, some tanks that we haven't seen in a while. We got to see Winston, we got to see Ball. Oh, that was great. V nice variation in this, and uh, the first uh, play of the game goes over to Wisp. Well, we may have been talking a lot about the DPS from Winter Solstice, but Wisp absolutely won that fight for uh, for their team. Yeah, that like they said, that was great positioning on the Bob, having him in the back line. You know, she's attacking from the front. You can't go anywhere. You can't hide behind any shields. Just didn't have an answer for that ultimate. No, not at all. And we're going to need to see a lot more work coming out from Love Shack Gaming going into our next map if they want to be able to stay in this series. The next map, by the way, is going to be Horizon Lunar Colony. Once again, a map with some uh, fun you can have. You can use the Reaper, you can use the Meg, you can use the Bastion. There is a lot of potential for, shall we say, comps that the defenders will find very fun that the attackers will just want to rip their hair out going through. A yeah, little bit the, of the chatter in space. Yeah, you might get some bunker, but if you bunker down, you're going to have to worry about Aspect coming in with that Tracer Bomb again. You know, all club together, Big Bomb can do a ton of damage. Absolutely. 
And uh, we'll see if they can get a little more done here. What adjustments do you think we need to see out of Love Shack in order to uh, to make this next map uh, work for them? Uh, the biggest change I would like for this see to them, see from them is focusing that mercy. She was getting res after res after res at the, you know at the beginning of the fights and making sure that they always had that six v five, that six v four pushing in, and just at that point it was a numbers game. Absolutely, and I think those I think the uh, tanks from Love Shack also need to be on the watch for those flankers getting in the back line. Uh, we do have a substitution coming through. We have uh, Winter Solstice swapping out Convictions for Detective Twelve Year Old and Theory out for Toxin. Uh, so uh, we're not going to see the pharmacy combination anymore. I think Theory Tropic and Convictions might be kind of the specialists for that. We'll see what Detective 12-year-old uh, brings to the table. Um, but yeah, I think the tanks from Love Shack needed focus on... Uh, if Aspect stays on that tracer, he had a timeshare in their back line. He was coming and going whenever he pleased. They need to shut him down if they want uh, their back line to be able to really you know, survive, deliver the healing they need. Um, a lot of it's going to come down to the tanks. And if Ashes Bay is back on that McCree... We're going to need to see that performance uh, come out from him because there were a couple times where Aspec uh, opted into that 1v1 and ended up getting that victory pretty convincingly. And then from there, without that hard counter in place, just has free reign to zip in and out of that back line. Yeah, like you said, I mean, uh, Love Shack is going to start charging him rent because was just living in the back line, had some great real estate back there. And like I said, was taking a residence what? registered to vote in the back line for Love Shack. <laughs> uh, oh, this could be fun. Whoa. I, I predicted the Bastion in the May, and it looks like we're going to be getting the absolute cancer comp coming out from Winter Solstice. Uh, you think the inspiration comes from their name a little bit? Winter Solstice have the May. I mean, if you're going to go for it, instead of the Bastion, go for the, go with the seventy six and go full Winter Soldier. <laughs> hey why not all right so we are gonna see if we have the answering may and reaper coming out from love shack kind of a blind counter pick what you want to deal with that bastion get up close freeze use the reaper shotguns to burn down that bastion before any healing can be done let's see if they can make it pay dividends for that yeah i wonder if they did their research and scouted these guys out ahead of time and know they like to run bunker oh lucio Big boob from Devtron, putting Jay the Great and Detective 12-year-old in grave danger. Jay the Great will fall, and it looks like Love Shack had the read here. They're on the point. Aspect is rotating to put pressure onto point, but there's nobody contesting. The first tick goes over. Weapon Tech X is burned down by Aspect, and it looks like Witcher Solstice ready to go down and contest now. We've got uh, Detective 12-year-old barricaded off onto the corner, doing that stall, but Wisp getting the pick on to Silver Star. And yeah, I think at this point, the numbers game is in, vantage of, is in uh, favor of Love Shack and they might just be able to take this out right. Yeah, Not Love Shack ready. running like a book with that start. And oh, this is gonna be Tim dangerous. captured with a number of Winter Solstice's members still on point. Very late deaths onto Aspect and Toxin. If Love Shack pushes in now, they might be able to take this before the end, before Winter Solstice even has their full respawns, before they're set up to fight, but looks like Love Shack not rolling in quickly enough. Winter Solstice, they've had a moment. They're set up. They're ready to fight. Ready to meet them here on the high ground. Yeah, it looks like they took the option out. of uh, resetting first, but see if that works out for them. All right, good wall coming out from Detective Twelve Year Old, helping secure the kill onto Devtron. Jay the Great falls as well, and now we're seeing Witcher Souls to stabilize a little bit. They do lose Love to Kill You too, but Aspect, once again, residing in that back line, uh, is going to fall to Ashes Bay, but this fight does not favor Love Shack. They're staggering out late, losing a lot of time on these respawns. They're not disengaging, they're not dying quickly. Yeah, they have to have an answer for Aspect. They I don't know what it's going to be. They tried the McCree. It, it didn't work. you got to do something, though. This guy is just tearing that back line apart. 
an MVP candidate performance thus far. Let's see if it holds up as Love Shack comes in for their second push onto point B. Uh, waiting, trying to bait out the May wall, but the uh, amplification matrix will come out from Silver Star as well as the supercharger from Up to Kill You 2. Jay the Great takes out Xerxes, but Ashes Bay equalizes with the kill on the Detective 12 year old. May ult coming out, the lamp falls, and it looks like Love Shack is just going to sweep Winter Solstice aside. They're on the point. They've captured the first tick with a very clean wipe. Will Winter Solstice be able to contest this out, give their teammates a chance to get back? No. A four minute time back for Love a four minute time bank for Love Shack, and that is what you want to see to get them back into the game. That was just a huge blizzard. Orissa halted everybody in. That blizzard got, I believe, five people, and they just stormed the point. However many, it got, touch. It, however many it got, it did the work it needed to and immediately cleaned up. All right, time to see if the if the uh, much vaunted by us DPS of Winter, of Winter Solstice can have a bit of a redemption arc. They were relatively quiet uh, on that first defense. Uh, it was over pretty quickly. They're going to need to be able to settle back into that rhythm they had on the first map. Let's see if they can uh, break through Love Shack's defense or if it's going to be Love Shack pulling off the Russian winter here on first point. Yeah, I want. I would actually like to see some more dive out of them. It looks like that's what we might be seeing. No, yeah, we got Tracer and Doomfist. Oh no, Genji now. They're they're, they're touring with us. <laughs> I yeah, I like to reserve my calls on the composition until they are outside of spawn because well, people mess oh, up. Oh, detective, don't don't tour with my heart like that. <laughs> we will, however, have the uh, Bastion and May combination coming out from Love Shack. Tr uh, trying their own hands at it, hopefully uh, going to be avoiding that big boop that uh, just pretty much took them out of the fight. Let's see how they make this composition work for them. Looks like we're going to have Aspect onto the Sombra for that hack-fist DPS combination. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm kind of, I like the uh, Baptiste over here, actually. With, if they're going to dive in, you can throw that uh, immortality field down and protect your Bastion from, from the heavy dive. Oh, love to kill you too. Absolutely shredded to pieces by Wisp. And while Jay the Great is able to pressure a point, his teammates are scattered and hurt without a main tank. This is not a position you want to be in. They may be alive for now, but they have to wait. And love to kill you too. All by his lonesome going to be coming through choke. They're going to have to rotate back. They're going to have to find some way to cover him or distract to keep him alive. We'll see how this fight goes. The surviving members trying to push into point. Wall to divide up the attacking members of Winter Solstice. So far, no kills. A lot of damage coming out, though. Ashes Bay narrowly avoiding death. Wisp putting down a lot of damage from that high ground now that he's set up again. Xerxes, your god, with the opening kill onto Toxin. Jay the Great in a pretty precarious position. The tanks of, uh, of Winter Solstice being pressured heavily by these DPS. Detective 12 year old can't quite secure the kill onto Ash's Bay. Um, will, however, be able to on the second attempt with some help from Silver Star. Will, this is a very long fight. A lot of ultimates being committed. A lot of ultimates. Love to kill you too does fall. I don't know that this is what you want to see from Winter Solstice. They get a pick onto Julio. This fight is messy. Detective 12 year old falls. So does Devtron. And it looks like, despite this fight going back and forth quite a bit, Winter Solstice is going to be able to take the point. Not quite as quickly as Love Shack, but they're going to have ultimates coming into this next fight. Aspect and Detective 12-year-old ready to go. Love to kill you too, Jay the Great, waiting in the wings. Yeah, that was an ugly slobber knocker of a fight, but they come out uh, they come out ahead, and they've, they've got that ult advantage. Should have four ults, maybe even getting a sound barrier in this fight, if it's a, extended out. A brawl that would make... Good old JR proud. Let's see if Winter Solstice can keep that tradition rolling as they push in onto point. Xerxes, your god, going with the lift opening. EMP coming out from Aspect. That's going to blunt the follow-up on that push, and it looks like Winter Solstice, they're not going to take a four-minute time bank lying down. They're determined to best it. The De Devtron falls. Julio's forced back towards spawn. Falls before he can get there, and it looks like Wisp going to come in, try and recontest. Manages it barely, but four minutes and 25. 
that was a that was an attack. The five man EMP by Aspect. This guy has been nailing ultimate after ultimate every round. Absolutely, this man is a force of nature in and of himself in this matchup. You just love to see that game since out of somebody getting the maximum value out of a single ultimate and just allowing the rest of his team to bulldoze over everybody else. Absolutely, and no fear on the part of Winter Solstice either. They got lifted up, stayed cool, calm, and collected, didn't overcommit on ultimates. Uh, they didn't panic. They had their plan. They stuck to it, and it worked out pretty well for them. Let's yeah, that's always a sign of good communication. You know, they, they talked with each other. They kept their cool, didn't panic, and just went about their game plan. Absolutely. Looks like uh, Love Shack is going to stick onto their May and Reaper combination. We've got Aspect now over onto the McCree. Time to, uh, perhaps anticipating that Lucio wraparound uh, from the uh, first attack that uh, Love Shack made. Have that flashbang ready to go, secure an early kill. Let's see what they make happen. Yep, yeah. yeah, boot me once. Not going to boot me twice. <laughs> Going with uh, all the Texan quotes today. Uh, <laughs> all right. Love Shack rolling out of spawn. Let's see if they make any adjustments once they see that the composition is not the Bastion they were perhaps anticipating. Pull coming out. Oh, still Nothing. the big boop. Big boop coming out from Devtron. The preparations were all for naught. Love Shack is going to be cleaning this one up even faster. Winter Solstice. Despite playing so cleanly outside of this first point, this just seems to be their kryptonite. Devtron just sneaking in that back line, landing that big boot, and then having the rest of the team just collapse on them on the low ground. Yeah, you got to play further back from the edge. You know that's coming. You got to play further back. You got to be ready to catch it. All right. Go. We have Love Shack pushing in onto the high ground. Fight was over so fast, and every team really had much opportunity to build up ultimates. Big pull coming out from Weapon Tech to clear that high ground, give his team some room to move in. A little bit of pressure from Detective 12 year old, but nothing telling just yet. Aspect though, capitalizing on that pull from left to kill you too. As soon as Julio and Wisp fall, Aspect with three. Once again, this man saving the matchup for his team and Love Shack forced to retreat. The, uh, Love Shack doing a better job disengaging and pulling back, not staggering out this fight. Uh, not a complete disaster, but uh, yeah. the time bank is definitely going to show that loss. Yeah, but like you said, they, it saves them from giving up so much alt charge and keeps them relatively balanced. Aspect waiting right by that door, pushing in close, nearly kills Weapon Tech X, forcing uh, Love Shack to rotate over to the main instead of the high ground. Jay the Great falls. This could be a fight for Love Shack here. I'd love to kill you too, falls primary sustained gone let's see if they can follow up with any more kills aspect falls big source of damage detective 12 year old not able to find a kill yet jay the great trying to lay him up for that meteor strike nothing doing though toxin getting pulled down frozen and killed jay the great coming back in uh love to kill you too trying to contest a lot of stall, but no telling damage being done on the part of winter solstice that's two ticks for love shack Will this fight end right here and now? Up to kill you two, going for the hook onto uh, onto Ashes Bay. Aspect, two kills, uh, kills the uh, Supercharger and Wisp. Toxin getting another kill onto Ashes Bay. Will Winter Solstice be able to stabilize off of this? It's looking likely. Detective 12 year olds falls. Xerxes is God, taking a lot of damage, not quite falling just yet. That's going to be Weapon Tech X first. Aspect with another two kills onto the tank, putting the team onto his back. Uh, if, if you're not voting for this man for the MVP of this match, uh, I am wondering what match you're watching. <laughs> Somebody get this man a ladder so all of his teammates can get down from his shoulders. My, <laughs> That was God. insane. And for fights that long, as that goes on, the respawn timers is getting longer and longer. You have less and less opportunity to make it work. All right, Love Shack pushing through main, going directly to point, just trying to force uh, a response from Winter Solstice. Jay the Great falls to Wisp. No kills yet, but a C9 from Winter Ooh. Solstice. They were pressured off the point. Nobody touched. That's going to be a minute and five time bank left in the... Uh, going to be a minute and five time bank 
for Love Shack at the end of four points. Yeah, you hate to see it, but you know, somewhat of a zoning blizzard kept most of the people off, and then Aspect uh, trying to do what he could in that back line, but just, mm-hmm. just couldn't hold point. Just too much pressure. Yeah, the whole team scattered off. Uh, and to be fair, that is kind of a tilting play. That's a that's a mistake that when you make it, you get frustrated and take some effort to keep yourself calm in that situation, not let yourself get tilted, not blame yourself or your teammates, just mentally reset for that next round. Yeah, that's always a tough one, you know, looking around like who was supposed to be on point. It was your job. It can easily lead to finger pointing. Absolutely. But let's see if they're able to keep it together. They do have a bigger time bank than uh, – they do have a bigger time bank than – Love Shack did, and Love Shack managed to make it a minute and five uh, with four points. So let's see if they're going to be able to do uh, the same or better. Yeah, I'm not sure if that dive is going to work this time because it took them about a minute and a half, two minutes almost on that first push, and it was an ugly fight. You know, it could have easily gone the other way. It was, uh, and it looks like uh, Love Shack is going to be running that May Bastion again, sticking to what worked out fairly well for them. Uh, let's see if uh, Love Shack is going to be able to make this a clean hold this time. Big wall cutting off the back line from the rest of Winter Solstice, resulting in an early death from Toxin. Aspect on point, not going to be able to just get the cap, uh, but the rest of his team still pushing in without Toxin. Aspect is pushing around to the left, looking for a hack on the back line, hacks the immortality field, but... Ashes Bay finds Silver Star. Right now, Winter Solstice has very little healing. And Love to Kill You 2 is going to end up uh, falling as a result of that. Jay the Great burned down by Wisp. And uh, Love Shack, pretty decisive victory there. Yeah, Ashes Bay giving them the Gandalf treatment with that wall, telling them, you shall not pass. <laughs> you shall not pass, although I think maybe the ice wall of Game of Thrones might be a little more apt. Hey, I'm another uh, guy. <laughs> hey, fair enough. Uh, all right, so we've got the second push coming through from Winter Solstice. This time, Toxin on the Zenyatta, trying to use that Discord work to try and get a little more damage done. But the damage will mean nothing if you can't get into place to apply it. Jay the Great falls again. Toxin falls to Wisp. And right now, I, I, I do wonder about the wisdom of that Zenyatta pick. And it looks like they do as well. They want that speed to be able to get through the choke, avoid the May walls, avoid all the various CC that can make it very difficult to get through here. Uh, once again, Winter Solstice kind of scattered, waiting for their teammates to regroup, make the play here. And it looks like they're just going to try and ignore that high ground, push directly onto point. Silver Star falls, Jay the Great isolated once again and will pay for it with his life. Toxin falls. Detective 12 year old does get an answering kill onto Ashes Bay, but he's forced off the point, really. He's going to come back in uh, and into the waiting arms of the Love Shack defense. Xerxes, your god, going to take him out quickly. Yeah, it looks like they're just trying to wait for Aspect to farm his EMP. And love at this to point, kill you you're two and a half minutes oh, in. Oh, Love to Kill You 2 nearly got staggered in a big way. However, uh, Winter Solstice now has perhaps their biggest weapon online. Oh no! The EMP, but uh, he is taken out before he can use it. His team once again caught in the lurch. Jay the Great falling once again. Ash with a, the huge pick. That EMP was ready to go. That would have been absolutely massive. But now Winter Solstice once again waiting for the regroup. Love Shack with an absolutely huge ultimate bank. This connection on the EMP from Aspect is going to need to be huge if he wants this this to work. He's in position to hit five. Will he make it work? Big lift coming out from Xerxes, your god. Going to result in Jay the Great falling. Aspect backs out. Doesn't commit the EMP. Yeah, it looks like he had second thoughts on it. Didn't quite feel comfortable with it. Go on to Ashes Bay. Does now have it ready to uh, try and contest the point. Devtron committing his uh, Amplification Matrix. Winter Solstice just falling back off the point out of the way. And now the EMP comes out. A lot of damage, but no kills yet. Uh, actually, as I say that, Love to Kill You 2 finds Devtron. The uh, Bar- the tag load coming out from Wisp will claim the life of Detective 12 year old. But it looks like Winter Solstice has the kills they need. They've stabilized on point and will be capturing it 
with just over 30 seconds to spare. Not the uh, time bank I think they were hoping for. Garen definitely not. Uh, definitely not that time bank considering that first round. And you gotta wonder if, you know, putting all their shit all their, their death 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 drawn. Death. That's an opening potentially for Love Shack. They, for uh, Winter Solstice, they're pushing in aggressively. Aspect pressuring point. But the blizzard comes out from Ashes Bay, and it results in the high ground members of Winter Solstice being swept clean, while the people on point are unable to make any real progress. Uh, Silver Star backing out. 30 seconds already gone. Winter Solstice is barely going to have time to touch this point. Yeah, that's the second or third really great blizzard that we've seen out of Ashes Bay. And I'm really loving this May pick. Yeah, doing a lot of work with it. This time they've been pretty good at shutting out Aspect, but Aspect is about to have that EMP again. Xerxes, your god, hacked. Aspect has the EMP. The rest of his team comes down to point, ready to try and make try to take advantage of it. Xerxes, your god, falls, but so does Jay the Great. EMP comes out, but it does it does connect onto four. Will they be able to clean it up? It looks like the answer is yes. We're gonna have an overtime cap though if uh, Love Shack isn't able to stagger it out. I don't think they will. Xerxes, your god, does touch, but not long for this earth. Falls, we have uh, Ashes Bay contesting point. All right, so right now, this is Love Shack's map to win. Yeah, there's not much you can do against that full suite of ultimates, and man, that was a, that was a rough fight there. <laughs> Absolutely. Winter Solstice going to need to be ready to try and uh, hold on here. Now, are they going to get another Lucio loop? You have to think that they're not going to be standing on that edge again. It makes you wonder if Devtron's even going to try it again, but it worked so well the first two times, and there was no effort to really counter it. Yeah, I mean, if you're two for two, you, I think you, you got to try for it. That's the only way you can get it this, this fast. Here's the thing, though. If you take that shot and you miss it, that costs your team an entire fight. Yeah. Interesting though, Wisp on the Symmetra, oh. they might just try for the teleporter directly onto point. They only need that first tick, so yeah, if you can surprise them, you know, get a slow rotation out, you can get the tick before they can even touch point. Uh, very interesting comp from Winter Souls, just a lot of heroes, I think, with kind of a incongruent sort of synergy. We have the Moira Lucio backline that's the standard right now, but Reinhardt and Roadhog. I Looks think like they're, they're going to try ready to just to... stay on point, and they're just going to fight on point. Uh, makes the most sense, and uh, quite frankly, it's probably the right play with that Symmetra. If you're ready to uh, meet them on, you know, the shores, so to speak, uh, with that teleporter coming down, you know, first person coming out of there might just get picked right out. Yeah, Good. they're just challenging them. Come to, come to our point. Come fight us. All right, Aspect in position up top, spotted out by Devtron. Love Shack knows that he's there, and they're going to teleport onto the high ground. Not direct, but an advantageous position nonetheless. Turrets coming out from Wisp, starting to build up that ultimate percentage. No telling damage landed just yet. We have Aspect hunting for a kill on the back line. Xerxes, your god, managing to save Julio. Uh, no progress made just yet. Maywall comes out from Ashes Bay. Doesn't manage to split up Winter Solstice too severely. Detective 12 year old falling to Devtron. This is the go button for Love Shack. They're pushing onto the point now. Aspect going to the back line, looking for some kills. Can he make something happen here? Weapon Tech X gonna fall from the pin. I'd love to kill you too, and Silver Star's coalescence. But we have the wall coming out from Wisp, Devtron, Sound Barrier. They have a lot of sustain, a lot of tools to help them make this point cap come through. Toxin ends up falling, Silver Star is dead, and so is Aspect. I don't think Detective 12 year old is going to be lasting too long either. And it looks like we're going to be tied up 1-2-1. One, one. I tell you what, that was a great adaptation. I love it. I think, I think we were right. They were trying to maybe teleport straight to point, and they saw the Reinhog there, realized they couldn't do it. They went, took the high ground, got the advantageous position, and just rained death from above. A very uh, well-planned uh, counter to the attack, uh, to the, I would, I guess I should say the aggressive defense of Winter Solstice. Well, uh, I think Love Shack did a really good job adapting. Uh, obviously we didn't see the DPS combo that we did on Oasis, but they did a good job of making sure that Aspect 
didn't continually get into the back line, uh, just wipe out the uh, squishier members of Love Shack, they did a good job. They made the adjustments that they needed to to come out with the win. And I think, like you said, that teleporter to the top is masterful. Let's see, though, if they can keep making those smart adjustments going on to Junkertown or if Winter Solstice can kind of uh, get back into the swing of things here. Yeah, Junkertown, especially the first one, very, very open map. Could easily see the dive that we saw back on Oasis. D probably going to see a fair or two. We'll see how this goes. Right now, though, uh, looks like uh, we might indeed detect a 12-year-old coming out for convictions. Uh, Theory Tropic, I don't think she's coming back in just yet. So it looks like we might be opting for a little more projectile play. Yeah, Convictions, you know, very good fair player. So I'm wondering if uh, how, we're going to get some hit scan counter play. We're going to see a Widow, maybe? Well, Cree Convictions, or Ash. going by Convictions as player profile, a lot of time spent on that Widowmaker as well. Maybe a viable weapon uh, for his team as much as that Farah. Oh, it's been a long time since we've seen some good Widow v. Widow duels. I, I, I would be excited to see one of those. As would I. Uh, Love Shack going to be taking defense on Junkertown, looking to uh, get that early hold, burn through the attack. Uh, let's see how this goes for them once they've uh, readied up. What do you think uh, Winter Solstice needs to do to get back into this? Ooh. I think they need to... They just need to empower Aspect, I think, and uh, do what they did on Oasis, where you have Aspect coming in from the side, Convictions coming up over top, and giving them, you know, multiple angles of attack to look at, because when Love Shack was able to use uh, the May to split them up and they only had to focus on one group, mm -hmm. they tore them apart, but when they have to kind of diverge their attention it's it's not good for them so you think maybe that the pressure of having the dps coming from different angles might sort of uh cause some communications breakdown on the part of love shack they might not necessarily be ready to handle it split off in different directions and just it devolves into a fight uh where it's a little messier where they sort of come apart of the seams yeah I, th I think winter solstice has shown that they do have the communication they do have the the teamwork but also if it gets into that down and dirty fight they're more than happy to slug it out and win. Absolutely, and we'll see which approach they take momentarily. Teams are just readying up right now for this second, uh, for this third map, I should say. And once again, I just want to remind everyone watching at home, we are going to be in, uh, we're going to, uh, we have our uh, MVP voting open in the Twitch panels. Go ahead, cast your vote. A lot of strong performances coming out so far. Uh, Aspect, I think, an early front runner. Convictions as well with that far on the first map. Looking absolutely devastating. Yeah, there's a lot of good choices here. You know, supports have been doing a good job as well. You know, Toxin, Theriotropic. Mm -hmm. you know, been pushing hard on them, keeping, keeping those DPS alive so that they can keep getting those kills. Absolutely, and Theory Tropic did a great job on that first map, getting reses every time her team needed them. And then obviously Devtron with those two huge boosts, you know, leading to fast point A takes. I would call that probably the single most uh, significant set of plays uh, on uh, Horizon Lunar Colony, because it just led to instant takes of point A both times. Yeah, I mean, you can't lose as long as you still have more time than your opponent. <laughs> Absolutely, and you know, long drawn out... Uh, Fights bleed off a lot of time bank. Can you imagine if they didn't cap uh, that first, uh, that they didn't cap their first run through with four minutes remaining, say that, you know, an extra two minutes got bled off. Who knows how that matchup might have ended up going. Yeah, it could have been very different, you know, especially with that initial four and a half minutes left. You know, so it's, that, that was, those boops were pretty, pretty, uh, pretty huge. They were absolutely on point. And uh, looks like we're going to be seeing Ashes Bay, uh, you know, doing a uh, living up to the name. We're going to have Convictions and Wisp, Bastion Battle. Who do you think this favors? Oh, well, we're going to get something cheeky out of here. It looks like they might be going for this side turret over here. and if... Going for the point-blank defense. Yeah, to get around that shield. I got, I got to give this one to the, to the defense. 
Let's see if they can make it work. A lot of damage coming out quickly. Will they be able to get any kills off of it? Not quite. Good reaction from Love Shack. Not quite caught out completely. But the shields burn away. The immortality heal doesn't come out quickly enough. Convictions will fall. Toxin does get the res. Uh, but the immortality field is gone. Love Shack has yet to break out of the hole. And Ash's Bay doing a great job throwing in some shots from the from the side here, throwing in that dynamite, you know, giving him multiple angles. Winter Solstice with a very powerful concave set up around this point. Gives them a lot of room to work with, but the amplification matrix coming out from the Silver Star gives uh, convictions the firepower needed to crack through that Maginot line-like defense right at the door. And while Ashes Bay is gonna get some answering kills, it looks like right now Winter Solstice might have to finally give up a little bit of ground. Not if Xerxes Your God has anything to uh, say out of, say of it, but gonna fall quickly, Winter Solstice setting up on the point. Yeah, keeping them in spawn for almost a full minute though, you know, bleeding that time off the clock. So if this comes down to, you know, that time bank battle, that, that's a great way to start. Absolutely, a lot of that time bank is burned away. Aspect has the Dragon Blade ready to go, answering Bob from Ash's Bay. Let's see, will Aspect be able to get anything out of this? Not quite, and he will in fact pay for the uh, for the for the uh, error of his ways. There, Xerxes, your god, gonna take him out. And once again, we've got a big concave set up from uh, Love Shack. But it looks like Winter Solstice is just gonna be able to muscle their way through. However, Bob coming out, buoyed by the Immortality Field. Will that be able to get any kills? Devtron's Immortality Field is gone. Aspect back onto that Tracer, immediately finding Julio. Ashes Bay, Aspect is unleashed, and it looks like, once again, they have no answer for that Tracer. Three kills, and they are gonna secure that point. Just leave this man on Tracer and let him do his work. Are we sure that this isn't like Kabaji in disguise? Like... Yeah, it's... We're, we're gonna have to do some checking, I think. <laughs> All right, well, Love Shack is... getting ready to try and check this assault as well. They've got a lot of ultimates coming online. That amplification matrix, the Bastion tank mode, uh, supercharger, Ashes Bay looking for some uh, fi for some burn damage from that dynamite. Will take out Convictions immediately. The res will come through, but Toxin is going to fall. Aspect doing a lot of damage, but the hero there, Ash is Bay, an absolute clinic in that fight. Yeah, looks like Aspect trying to build up that pulse bomb and and possibly just take that bunker out in one fell swoop. But in the meantime, Ash is Bay just tearing through that enemy team. Mm hmm and we'll uh, see if Love Shack, uh, you know, just is able to keep this defense rolling, or if Winter Solstice is going to be able to change up their approach any. They've still got some ultimates in the bank. They've got the Bastion ult. They've got the uh, Valkyrie from the Julio. But we've... Uh, Aspect oh. takes out Ash's Bay. Once again, a Pulse Bomb finding pay dirt. We have Julio going in for the res. Does get Ash's Bay back. Jay the Great falls, and it looks like Love Shack is going to be able to hold on for just a bit longer here. Winter Solstice once again being forced to back up, not even really getting much of a setup there. Yeah, if you're going to go for that solo pulse bomb, you've got to deny that res so you keep, you know, you keep that number game up. Uh, amplification Matrix coming out from Silver Star. Ashes Bay though is having enough of aspect shenanigans, takes him out of the fight. Jay the Great trying to push forward oh. convictions. Going tag mode, trying to put down some damage, but Ashes Bay drops Silver Star. Devtron does fall in kind, but no definitive advantage just yet. As I say that, though, Toxin takes out Wisps, but Julio is in position with the res. Aspect coming back in, looking for that duel with Ashes Bay, looking for some revenge. But Wisp with a two-piece Weapon Tech X securing the fight here. Once again, uh, Love Shack will hold strong. And this is what I keep talking about. They get that early you know, trade, but then... Julio comes in on that mercy with the reds and all of a sudden flips it back the other way. Absolutely. A clutch res from Julio. Uh, however, once again, we do have a bit of an ultimate advantage coming for Winter Solstice. Will they get in position to use these or will Love Shack continue to find kills that defang the push before they even really start? Aspect in that back line. I think Xerxes, your god, has some idea of where he's at. 
But mm -hmm. not enough. Big lift coming up. Wisp into the air, comes down. No kills thanks to that immortality field, but Xerxes, your god, coming in, dropping Jade the Great, Ashes Bay with another two-piece. And yeah, the Love Shack here is up to code. That building is stable. You're not breaking through those walls anytime soon. No, and that was a great immortality by Devtron there, keeping everybody alive from that grab flux. And just mm -hmm. and we, still had, we still had ultimates coming out on the part of Winter Solstice. This is that that um, bat bolt with with the uh, Bastion man. That's gonna do. What is that? Too much DPS. <laughs> we don't. We can't count that high. That is certainly one way of putting it. Uh, it's uh, a lot of pain to be dealing with in any case. Looks like uh, Winter Solstice is gonna be trying to play around the inside, deny that Bastion damage as long as possible. Come up from behind, try and get things up close and personal. Brawl it out. Ashes Bay does spot them out. The uh, Amplification Matrix comes out from Silver Star, but I wonder if it's not poorly placed inside. Oh, that, yeah, that Amplification Matrix is going to get nobody staring straight into a wall, unlike the one from Silver Star. While they may not get any kills while it's still active, Wisp will drop Convictions and Jay the Great, thanks in part to the Supercharger coming out from Weapon Tech X. Wisp with another, Xerxes your god, holding that point strong, dropping Aspect, and it looks like Winter Solstice is going to be ground to a halt right here at the start of point B. That yeah, is Weapon what Tech X there, look there halting everybody back into that stairwell looked like right as uh, Silver Star tried to do the uh, the Matrix there and just made it useless. A very, uh, very clutch play, a uh, very clutch a uh, amp supercharger, that's the word. I've had a long day. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, Clutch Supercharger with a uh, botched amplification matrix leads to a lot of DPS amplified on one side, not so much the other. Winter Solstice is going to need this defense to be airtight if they want to keep uh, Love Shack from going up 2-1 to one in this series. Yeah, something we haven't seen from, from them yet. You know, their, their defense on a Horizon, kind of porous. But uh, yeah, has been found wanting. But I don't think we're going to see any uh, heroic Lucio boops on this map, so we might be able to see something a little different, might be able to see a good stronghold. That's true, but I believe in Devtron. I think he can find a way to force them <laughs> off the high ground if anyone can. Uh, we've got Aspect now uh, showing a little more flexibility in his hero pool. Going over to the Junkrat, Convictions will be remaining on that Bastion. Looks like they're not going to be setting up that, uh, you know, sort of early on hold or no maybe they will yeah they will. looks like they're going to be ready to come out of that uh well it's not quite the love shack but it's love shack adjacent right now i would say as love shack getting ready to come out of that point uh but winter solstice in position with that extra spam damage coming out from the junk rat the shield comes down but love shack is expecting it they are fortified at the door immortality field down shields coming out this uh is they're not, they're not surprised. No, and Ashes Bay on the Pharah raining devastation into them from the rear. Absolutely, and it looks like they're just going to be able to come through. They're caught in a pincer movement, rocking a hard place, and it looks like Winter Solstice is going to be thawed before oh. uh, much longer. This pharmacy was just a great answer to that, to that defense. Absolutely. It's, uh, it pretty much cracked that open immediately. And while Aspect is still active, getting a pick, uh, Wisp will close it out. Ashes Bay, we've got a lot of late staggers again from Winter Solstice. This is going to keep them from really having all members of their team back in place, ready to fight. Pretty much until Judgment Day, until that point. It's already around the last corner. Wisp will have a nice, clean line of sight at them, at them as they try to engage. This is not a great spot for Winter Solstice, even, with, even if they had taken... More time off the time back going into this. I wouldn't exactly like this. Jay the Great going down. The uh, cooldowns burn. Wisp oh. takes out Convictions. Ashes Bay drops it. The tire coming out from Aspect uh, is going to look for something. But with that Immortality Field in place, he will find nothing. Good day to you, sir. You get nothing. Go home. Oof. Five minutes in the bank to push it. 50, 53 meters, we'll say. We'll All up. the time in the world 
for such a short, short distance left to go. And once again, Winter Solstice taking some punishment straight out the door. They're not going to have time to set up clean. They're not going to have time to look for an, ad, for an advantageous spot. Xerxes, your god, going with the lift, trying to pull people out of position. Will find Jade the Great. Convictions is trying to put down that damage, but he's all by his lonesome. He's got no protection, no healing, and no life remaining either. Wisp will be able to take out a few more. Aspect on Tracer, trying to put the team onto his back and carry it up, but I don't think any man is strong enough to overcome these odds. Jay the Great comes back in on that Hammond, trying to stall things out, give his team a little more opportunity, but no such luck. Love Shack going up two to, two to one in this map. They have it dialed in right here. Winter Solstice we'll start it off looking so strong. Where do, what do you think's going wrong here? I don't know. I mean, I mean Love Shack might be listening in because they were using the advice that we wanted for for Winter Solstice of having that Farrah come over top and having that strong ground attack. Is I mean, this Farrah from Ash's Bay just completely destroyed any defense they had. Wasn't letting them set up. Was poking them. They were down to half health by the time they got to the cart. Indeed. Can we confirm that Love Shack does not have a spy on our Discord call? Because <laughs> the, the amount of... Uh, adjustments pretty much every single thing we were kind of hoping they would do they've ended up doing it uh from this match uh it started off with winter solstice looking like they had a pretty decisive advantage but uh it seems like uh love shack is just i want to say that little bit strategically sharper they're just able to make the adjustments and win whereas winter solstice they you know, they have very talented DPS with a lot of upside, but I just feel like there's little things that are costing them. They're not um, they're not uh, dying quickly at the end of fights. They're not resetting it. It ends up costing them a lot of time. I think you see that especially on that Jockertown defense. Definitely. And, you know, I think Love Shack is just a little bit more adaptable. They're they're trying out different compositions, and even within those compositions, they're they're doing new things. Like we saw with the Symmetra on Horizon, you know, we thought they were going to go to point, but they ended up taking the high ground. You know, with this Pharaoh, they, mm -hmm. they suspected that they were going to do that same bashing defense that, that they pulled, and they were right, and then they just had the Pharaoh over top, and they just... Winter Solstice, like you said, very strong mechanically, but just seemed to be, you know, this is our game plan, we're not going to deviate from it, and we're just going to push it and see if it works, whereas Love Shack is you know, willing to read what the enemy is doing and counter. Oh, the adaptability coming out from Love Shack with the sort of, shall we say, frosty permanence of Winter Solstice. <laughs> uh, let's see what's going to happen here. We have Detective 12 Year Old coming back in in place of conviction for our final map, Numbani. Ooh, could definitely see some more fair on this map. I think, I think we'll see some. Definite and, uh, possibility, and if you're Ashes Bay, you've got to feel good about your performance on that last map. I feel confident breaking out the Fara if, uh, you know, the rest of the team has gotten a little practice with it on this map. Yeah. You might see some more bunker from, from both sides, possibly, and if you can get that concussive blast or, you know, get around to the to the opposite side behind that shield and just rain in those rockets, it can it can take a bunker apart and real quick. Absolutely, as can a Devtron boop, which not out of the question. A lot of walls to ride for Lucio here. Oh, I want to see another one. First point. Oh, please give it to us. Uh, I do have to say, though, the cleanup crew at the Adawe National Airport leaves a lot to be desired. Super modern city. It's been, what, almost two years at this point in these dismantled robots and broken walls. That's, uh, I got to say, that's got to... <laughs> It's got to hurt the airport's Yelp. Review. Well, you, you see the robots were the cleaners. It was an auto oh, cleaning okay, thing. Yeah. Man. Oh, so. And Doomfist broke those two. He, uh, surprisingly, not a fan of Roombas. You actually. know, I was going to say, for uh, robots with cannons built into their arms, uh, I guess are those <laughs> vacuum cleaners, a uh, little it's bit of attachment. spray, like waxing compound. It yeah. makes Doomfist's rampage a little less impressive if he's just beating on the janitors. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to start somewhere. It's like, you know, any RPG, you're, you're, you pick on the rats and then, and then the skeletons. <laughs> the head of Talon is working his way up, is he? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're back on that Bastion Ashes Bay, uh, representing on that Farah. Let's see if he can find as much success as he can here. We're going to have the dive coming out on the part of Winter Solstice. 
A lot of people getting low. Toxin 1 will just manage to survive. Jay the Great looping around, getting ready to pressure out that back line. But Xerxes, your god, is waiting for him. And it looks like that Hammond might not be able to escape. Toxin, definitely gone. Aspect is out. Jay the Great will get the kill onto Devtron, but too little, too late. Detective 12 year old still hasn't been detected uh, here in the back line, but so far, nothing for uh, Winter Solstice. Yeah, one of the things they're going to have to do is bait out that immortality field because they're just diving too hard and he throws that down and completely nullifies everything. Ashes Bay doing a lot of damage, but Julio ends up falling, putting that pharmacy combination in some jeopardy, but. Aspect is going to fall, Toxin's going to fall, Xerxes here, God is out of the picture. So far, pretty back and forth. Uh, no one with a distinct advantage just yet. Uh, however, Wisp on that Bastion putting out a lot of pain. You're going to need more firepower than Winter Solstice presently has to crack that defense. And Ashes Bay, you got to be taking Jay the Great out of the equation. And once again, we have Winter Solstice just members kind of uh, listless. Not really, uh, just kind of waiting for the rest of their team to come back in. Not really playing together super well here. No, this dive is definitely... They're, I think they're trying to go for some sort of pincer dive, but it's just not coordinated like you want to no, see. It's not, and there's pressure on that back, but Xerxes, your god, is ready to catch it every time. There's been some pokes there, but he's there with his shield, there is his accretion, there with his primary fire, just there to sort of poke back any uh, probing attempts onto the back line. He's ready to receive it, and his team is building up a pretty sizable ultimate advantage. Uh, Detective 12-year-old on point looking for something. This is uh, more than two minutes, and this Sombra has not gotten her ultimate yet. Aspect coming in with the Dragon Blade. Will he be able to make this work? They are going to take out the Immortality Field, Devtron. Aspect once again popping off, maybe giving his team the tools they need to win. Ashes Bay is hacked, landlocked on point, going down. Julio gets the res off onto Weapon Tech X, but I don't know how long that stall is going to last. Even with Wisp being here, he's hacked. He's being pressured by every surviving member of Love Shack, and I just don't think... Uh, yeah, no, this is it. Winter Solstice is going to be claiming this point. Love Shack is uh, going into the streets phase, but in a pretty impressive hold, I think. No, very great hold. You know, whittling, whittling down that time pick, but Aspect coming in with that Nano Blade, just doing what he does best. Winter Solstice playing forward, getting ready to take off these uh, split spawns. Weapon Tech X dying here means that they'll have a good uh, amount of distance on that cart, completely uncontested, before Love Shack is really ready to come back in with all six. They'd love to kill you, taking a good chunk of damage they were managing to get out. Yeah, managing to get it alive. Wisp swapping over to that McCree, Ashes Bay onto the May. Composition here, I think, tailor made to shut down aggressive flankers. Flashbang, you've got the hook, you've got the uh, freeze from your May. But so far, no pressure on Takart. However, love to kill you and Jay the Great in a rough spot here. Aspect nanoed again. Doesn't have his blade online though, so I'm not sure how much value this is going to get, especially with Ash's Bay running him down like he owes him money. Yeah, you got to question that nano when he was 20 25% away from blade. You just maybe want to hold on to that. Absolutely, I think they're going to want that one back, especially because Aspect is getting close to it now. Uh, however, they do still have some ultimates they can get uh, pay dirt from. Detective 12-year-old with that EMP. Jay the Great is going to have his mind. Aspect's still going to have his blade, and there's not going to be a defensive ultimate to really catch it. You just got to watch out for that McCree, the uh, the uh, the May, Ashes Bay, momentarily confusing me, and Xerxes, your god, on the Roadhog. Those three have the potential to shut him down. Yeah, that, I mean, because you do have that brief moment when you hit that, you know, that ultimate button that you, you know, you pop out of there. And if that hog times it just right, he could hook you out of the EMP, actually. Absolutely. EMP comes out. Here comes the blade. Here comes the primal rage. Here comes the uh, sound barrier. A little bit of an overcommitment, I think, on the part of Winter Solstice, but it is getting results. They are winning this fight out, and it looks like they're going to be able to push it through. However, some stall from Devtron will buy his team a little bit more time uh, off the time bank. But, yeah, I don't yeah. know if you necessarily need it, especially the, the Primal Rage. 
Four ultimate seems like a bit of an overcommitment. Uh, they do still get the kill on the tox, and so once again, late kill will guarantee them a little bit more progress. But Winter Solstice, as we know, is not a team that shies away from fighting one down a map. They're posturing up early to try and just go in there. However, Xerxes, your god, all the way behind. Detective 12 year old with the double kill. Ashes Bay taking out Aspect. Uh, this is, uh, I gotta say, not the best position I can imagine for Winter Solstice. They're going after Jade the Great and love to kill you too. Love to kill you too. Out of the fight, we have the uh, male coming out from Ashes Bay. Uh, perhaps I think I don't know agree with this Zen swap. Yeah, the Zen swap. I don't know either. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty vulnerable, and with so much CC and with so much one pick potential, Zen. Yeah, the, I mean, the only thing I can think of is that they're trying to build up a trance to counter Blizzard? Uh, it's but a possibility. That's well, a stretch. It gives, a, it gives them a support ult uh, to try and counter the sound barrier with, but, uh, you know, they had a Lucio to begin with. I'm not really sure the rationale. Yeah. Love Shack getting ready for another defense. Wall comes out. Aspect is up, and this time the Nano is clean. Will he be able to get anything out of it? No. Oh. Oh. Shut down. Down. Once again, hey, when you when you can counter two ultimates with just one, you love seeing that. Absolutely. And uh, while they did end up also committing the sound barrier, just as you know, sort of the reflex uh, reaction to cancel that blade, they've forced Aspect off of that Genji onto the McCree. I mean, at this point, do you think they should just break out his tracer? Because so far, like. It I mean, That's when they've been pushing, it's been with Aspect on Tracer. Jay the Great uh, pressuring that high ground. Xerxes, your god, uh, trying to go after him. Not a great matchup for the Hammond. However, love to kill you too. Caught out by Xerxes, pops his primal rage in order to survive. Xerxes, your god, getting juggled. Uh, not, I'm not sure the most valuable ult from love to kill you too, but he is taking Xerxes, your god, out of the fight. Now that that primal is over, though, Will he be able to survive? Survey says... See, this is where I would have liked to see that trance, dealing with all of this damage coming out. But Toxin used it a little early, and then... You know, Love Shack just waiting for it. Just waiting for that trance to end. Better trigger discipline on the ultimates coming out for Love Shack, and it looks like, once again, whilst uh, Winter Solstice has been weighed, measured, and found lacking on this attack push. No, uh... It, they made it pretty far, but if they, uh, if Winter Solstice gives up point B, their backs are against the wall here. This is match point, and we know that Love Shack has been very strong on the attack. Very much so. They're very aggressive team, very creative team, I would say, as well, when it comes to attacking. You never they know are. what they're going to come out with. Absolutely, and so far their coordination just seems to have been a step better than Winter Solstice in this case. Yeah, especially on that defense, you could, you know, they were trying that, you know, Winter Solstice was trying that pincer attack, and you could tell there was good communication because they were, you know, watching the flanks, they, they knew when to turn, they knew where everything was coming from. Absolutely, and we have one last chance here for players to make a case for themselves as our MVP of the game. If you haven't cast your vote already, go ahead and do that in the Twitch panel. Like we said, a lot of great performances coming out today. Wisp and Ashes Bay turning up a lot in the second half of this series. Xerxes, your god, and Weapon Tech X being a little more steady than the tech duo of uh, Jay the Great and Love to Kill You 2. Doing a great job keeping themselves alive in this uh, matchup. And of course, you know, a man tearing up the first three maps, you have Aspect. Although right now, uh, Love Shack is doing a great job of keeping Aspect's gun silent. Here's what we love to see, though. Devshunt on that Lucio. So we probably go. expecting to go from that bunker. Yeah, let's see if it happens. Looks Can like we're going to have the Bastion duel happening. Ash's base oh. still in spawn, though. Uh, oh. Dev, you're breaking sorry, my heart. The wrong map. Yeah, we have the... Uh, we have the Batiste, no more uh, sick boobs. But for the Bastion duel, the Batiste is what you want. You Gotta be yeah, optimistic on the that high ground. Trade shots. Too, All right, they are set up across the way. Shield coming out from Jade the Great. Uh, or 
good uh, balance of his shield to prolong the shield of Love to Kill You 2, but Love to Kill You 2 will ultimately end up falling. I think a bit of a misposition on that immortality field. While Xerxes, your god, and Ashes Bay rush the point, they're able to freeze and stun anyone who contests. And once again, Love Shack, uh, just crystal clear, absolutely polished attack. Yeah, Xerxes, your god, hitting a huge accretion onto the Bastion, completely nullifying all of the DPS. And just right. giving Love Shack the, the advantage on that attack. The pirate ship in full effect. Let's see if uh, Enter Solstice is able to crack it this time. Now they have Aspect over on the Hanzo, Detective 12 year old, going on to the Junkrat, but that's a late swap. They're not going to have one of their DPS players anywhere near the fight for another good few seconds. Now they're, they're going to have to give up these first two corners, it looks like. Yeah, and that's not ideal. Like we said, if they end up having to. Uh, if they lose B, C, they didn't make it far enough for it to be really meaningful. And it looked like looks like Wisp is just going to chew straight through them. Detective 12-year-old gets to the fight, but run as fast as his little 12-year-old legs may carry him. He couldn't get there in time to really rally with his team and uh, make anything happen there. Yeah, two it kills be before the Junkrat could even get there. Now we're looking at six minutes. Point B is gone minutes. with zero resistance. It's, it's like Winter Solstice took up pacifism for that point. Yeah, I mean, they're, you're not Zenyatta. I know you were playing him, Toxin, but get, we got to get some aggression out here. And it looks like they're going to be going into an absolutely massive ultimate bank for Love Shack as they try and counter this last final push. Blizzard comes out, results in the death of Jade the Great. Aspect trying to stall out on point, trying to find any kills that he can, but Love to Kill You 2 falls. Evening out the pick, Aspect gets onto Weapon Tech X. Wisp drops Aspect, Weapon Tech X revived by Julio. And yeah, it looks like uh, Love Shack has taken Winter Solstice for a ride. Winter Solstice is down and out. Winter Solstice is going to die. Jay the Great falls, and that's going to be it. We might have a last second Reinhardt contest, but no, not going to get there in time. Love Shack Gaming with the 3 1 win started off with a pretty. Uh, def a pretty dominant win on Winter Solstice's part on Oasis, but every other map, Love Shack, has been a few steps ahead. Yeah, I mean, and just, honestly, I really loved Ash's base switching off to that May. Really just broke apart their attack and just sectioned them off, and they were able to have the numbers advantage and just, you know, 6v3, six, three, six, three, six, v 4 and just mow them down one by one. A seriously impressive uh, performance from Ashes Bay on that Fara as well as the May. Really great job, Devtron doing a, doing good work on Horizon Lunar Colony. Just three really solid maps from Love Shack Gaming. Well thought out, great strategies, great ability to adapt on the fly. This is a team that's got some legs, I think. Definitely, and I, I don't know if they have a coach who's calling these swaps or if they're doing it themselves, but the adaptability was their key to winning that match. You know, like I said, we, they started off slow on that first map, but I feel like they read Winster Solstice and knew what they were going to try to do and just picked them apart a little bit more. And if you notice, each map was a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger of a win. And then just that last Nimbani map was just completely one-sided. Yeah, at that point, you got to wonder if Winter Solstice had the, the wind taken out of their sails, as it were. Uh, yeah. Out this... of the pirate ship? <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, well, their pirate ship was not quite as effective as the uh, the, <laughs> the SS Love Shack, I suppose you could call it. <laughs> oh, uh, so we're going to be having a uh, member of... Uh, we're going to be having a member of Love Shack joining us. Uh, Xerxes, your god. First off, congratulations on the win. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you guys coming out for us as well. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's an absolute pleasure to uh, watch a game. And honestly, you guys gave us a great series. That first map, definitely a little bit rough. What do you think um, went differently uh, for that map compared to the rest of the series? Uh, the rest of the series, uh, I switched to Sigma, and that really helped. They had a uh, fair mercy in the beginning, and we mm -hmm. didn't try to match with our own, which, you know, I think we, we have a really, really good Farah, Ash's Bay, and... He, he, you know, when you have a far in the sky against another far in the sky, it takes off a lot of pressure from the team because they try to do air to air battles a lot. Mm -hmm. And those rockets not coming 
down on us is really beneficial. So, uh, yeah, traditionally getting hit by high yield explosives uh, detrimental to your health. But <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, again, uh, one thing I want to harp on that we were talking a lot about during the cast is you guys made just really great like mid game adjustments. You guys. Uh, do you, are, do you guys have, like, a coach a lot of uh, time to practice? Because you guys played very well polished today. Yeah, we practice a good bit, good portion of the week. We practice every day, uh, and we do have a coach. He's He does VOD reviews with us a good bit, and we've been playing these maps for a long time. So when we're some team that does something different, we've learned to adjust quite well, especially on these map pool. Yeah, and that tendency paid off. Like, by the time we got to Nibana, you guys just it just rolled right through. Yeah, we, we took off the silk gloves and got focused and started drinking hot sauce, baby. Yeah, off I don't think I've ever gloves. seen six minutes for point C. Off with <laughs> the silk gloves, on with the brass knuckles. Oh, yeah. I love to I, play Hog when I can, but Sigma is just, it's he's pretty broken still, and he can do so much. Yeah, absolutely. So you don't think that uh, uh, additional second for redeploying the shield, you think that uh, Sigma's still pretty much the, the off tank to be playing right now? Yeah, I, I really do. I mean, he can do just so much. He has an extra shield. I know people don't like the double shield, but <laughs> it's Overwatch for you. I played GOATS for an entire year. Well, <laughs> I didn't really play GOATS that much. I played Far Mercy into GOATS, and it's pretty <laughs> fun, but it's just so much healing, you couldn't do much. But yeah. Overwatch changes all the time. Absolutely. Uh, Val Nilo, anything you'd want to ask real quick? Um... You kind of hit it on the head. We were talking about the adaptations you guys were making. All map, you know, that May swap on to Horizon really helped. Um, the only thing I say is just job well done and keep up the great work. We look forward to watching you guys this season. We'll keep on trucking for you guys. All right, absolutely. And hey, you're up. Uh, you've got two wins, only one draw. Um, how are you guys feeling about your chances going forward? Uh, I'm gonna try to make every match going forward. I need to be there for the team. I wasn't there last week and we we dropped it with a draw, but uh, we're gonna keep looking forward and and go from there. All right. And once again, congratulations on your win and good luck going forward. Can't wait to see more performances like this one because this is a uh, this was a clinic. And also before you go, congratulations, you are our viewer MVP for this match. Hell yeah. And I also want to give a shout out to our coach, Polo. He's put a lot of time into into hitting us. Um, and, you know, we are pretty obedient now. So <laughs> uh, It has paid off. You guys played very cleanly, very impressively. And I got nothing to say other than just great stuff today. Thanks, man. I appreciate you guys. Have a good night. You too. All right, that was Xerxes, your god, from the winning team, Love Shack Gaming. Uh, so that concludes our game for today. Uh, what a series. Fantastic series. You know, I, they were strong coming out the gate Winter Solstice was, but, man, that turnaround, those those last three maps was just... You, you love seeing something like that. It's You know, you, you hate seeing four rows, and you love yeah. seeing teams come back. Yeah, there's the whole meme of like three Overwatch, four Overwatch, um, uh, just seeing a complete one-sided stomp here. But we had a team really turn it around. You know, they mm -hmm. made the adjustments they needed to. They won, and it shows. You know, a uh, a great adaptability, and it just it makes for a more exciting series. It gives you something to really hold yeah. on to when and you it, see that. And it shows back. you the prac. You know, when you practice and you put in the time mm -hmm. and you, and you learn the compositions. You know, because. Winter Solstice was a very great mechanically team. Like, you know, watching yeah. them, they had great mechanics, good positioning, but they just didn't have that X factor that Love Shack brought. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Love Shack, I think, definitely establishing themselves as a, as a team to watch here in the remainder of the, remainder of the tournament. 100% agree. All right, so thank you everyone for coming out to watch Love Shack Gaming versus Winter Solstice, and congratulations to Love Shack Gaming on that 3-1 win. I have been your play-by-play -play caster, CJ. You can find me on Twitter at the underscore raging underscore nerd, uh, and on Discord, and uh, also just you know here at Star Esports. Uh, well, Nilo, you got anything to uh, 
you know, plug? Um, I do have my Twitter, you know, Twitter, uh, just Vol Nilo, same as my name, and same thing with my Twitch. I, you know, I'm trying to trying to stream more, but I'm doing it just a couple times a month right now. But mm-hmm. please, if you have a chance, come check me out. I'd very much appreciate it. Check Vol Nilo out on Twitter and Twitch. <laughs> It's been a very long day for me. Yeah, dude, I've been up, I'm on the East Coast, and I've been up since about 7 a.m. <laughs> I feel you. Yeah, I moved out to California, but I'm still operating on East Coast time. Anyway, uh, stay up to date with all of your all-star esports uh, events. Uh, follow Star Esports on Twitter, uh, and we'll see you guys for the next game. Have a good night, everyone, and you know, enjoy some Overwatch. <laughs>